The year is 1916. Let's meet two children, Ahmed and David. They're arguing, as friends do, over a game of marbles. They are good friends. The place they live is called Palestine. David is a Jewish boy and Ahmed is a Muslim boy. In 1916, they were both 10 and cheeky kids. Hey, give me my blue one back. (laughs) Hi everyone, we're in Palestine, but this land we're in has had many names. Canaan, Judea, Israel, the Holy Land to Christians, the Promised Land to Jews. The capital Jerusalem is significant to the three Abrahamic religions. Judaism, 3000 BC, Christianity, 40 AD, and Islam, 600 AD. Yes, that's right. And the people who rule the land in my time are called the Ottomans, ruling Palestine and many other places in the region for 400 years, 1517 to 1917. This Turkish empire governed different religions. My family have been living in this land for over 3,000 years. It was first named Judea after the Jewish tribe of Judah, although the earliest known name of this region is Canaan. But then Judea was changed to the name Syria Palestina by the Romans in 67 AD after they invaded and expelled almost all the Jews. From this point, Jews were scattered around the world. I have some family who stayed in the region throughout the years, but most of my family went to other countries. The Jewish people, my people, have always longed to return to the land of Israel, where they can live in peace. And my family have lived in the same land for 1300 years. They migrated here from other regions of Arabia. It is 1918 and David and Ahmed are now 12. Germany and its allies, including the Ottomans, fought against France, Britain and their allies. When the Germans lost the war, the Ottomans lost their empire. Our fate are now with the British, who have appointed the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajj Amin al Husseini, to control us. In 1920, the League of Nations was created to promote peace in the world. They agreed that the Jews, who were suffering persecution, be allowed to return to their homeland. They suggested the whole of Palestine, including what later became Jordan, be allocated to the Jews. At the same time, the Mufti was very angry about this, despite the fact that the League also created many other states that would become independent Arab countries, such as Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. But the Mufti believed that the Arabs had the total right to Palestine, from the river to the sea. And so he called for attacks on the small Jewish communities who had legally purchased land from Arab and Turkish landowners. This is bad news for me and Ahmed. The Mufti at first befriended the British but soon changed his allegiance once the Nazis established themselves as anti-Semites in Germany. There were Arab attacks on Jews and reprisals. And this was to be the beginning of the conflict. David and Ahmed are still playing marble games, but while their friendship is strong, Politics and hatred is causing a rift between their respective peoples. We will find it much more difficult to continue our friendship now. The majority of my people still want to be friendly neighbours with yours, but your elders are too hateful of us. 20 years on. From 1929 until the beginning of the Second World War in 1939, the Grand Mufti encouraged Arabs in Palestine to attack the British and drive them out and to attack the Jews because they denied the Jews their right to return to their ancestral homeland. In World War II, the Grand Mufti supported the Nazis and met with their leader, Adolf Hitler, who supported their plan to exterminate Jews. Certainly not a time for a friendly marbles game with Jews and Arabs, who have now officially become enemies. Although the more moderate Muslim families always coexisted with the Jews, this was becoming more difficult in an area that was being hit by land and religious conflict six to ten years on. In the Second World War, six million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust. So hundreds of thousands of surviving Jews had nowhere to go but their ancestral homeland. It was a land still controlled by the British with a population of Jews, Arabs, Christians and other faiths. Many Jews who had returned over the past century had legally purchased land and the majority of Jews wanted friendly relations with the Arabs and Jerusalem had once again become majority Jewish by the late 1800s. To appease the Arabs, the British controlled the number of Jews allowed to enter Palestine. The British struggled to keep the peace between Arabs and Jews. There were huge problems. The Arabs were under instructions to attack the British and the Jews. The Jews had been allied with the British until they had to fight for the right of their fellow Jews to be let into the Holy Land. In 1947, the British handed over the mandate to the newly formed United Nations. 
the United Nations democratically brought Israel into existence with the partition plan, allocating land to the Arabs and the Jews equally. So in 1948, Israel declared itself a Jewish state, while the UN proposed dividing the land into two states. Arabs and Jews were expected to be allowed to live in each state. At last, a state where me and Ahmed can play Sheshpesh together. But unfortunately, the Arabs did not accept the partition and attacked Israel almost immediately in the War of Independence. The war set in motion the Palestinian refugees crisis, said to number 750,000. For the Arab people, this was referred to as their catastrophe. Unfortunately, the Arabs living in Palestine were told to leave by the Arab forces against Israel. Those Arabs that ignored the warning and didn't leave were not dispossessed by Israel and have had equal rights as Israeli citizens, the same rights as Israeli Jews. The 750,000 Arabs who left became, and still are, refugees living in Jordan, Lebanon and Iraq as second-class citizens. Also, at this time, there was an even higher number of Jews living in Arab countries, said to be 820,000 that were ethnically cleansed from their countries, and those refugees were absorbed by the new Jewish state. In 1967, Israel was again attacked by many Arab countries, and Israel managed to win a war which was a threat to its existence. In this war, Israel captured the area from Jordan. The territory is biblically referred to as Judea and Samaria, and also known to many as the West Bank. This land includes many places which are of deep religious significance to the Jewish people, like Hebron, where the Jewish patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are buried. This is an area that has been the flashpoint of many of the problems leading to the present day. Gaza and the Sinai were also captured in this war, also known as the Six Day War. In 1982, in peace negotiations, Sinai was returned to Egypt, while Gaza and the West Bank were under Israeli control. In 2005, Israel pulled out of Gaza to be administered by the Palestinian Authority, but in the election of 2006, Hamas was elected as the government. In 1964, the Russian government encouraged the Arabs living in Palestine to create a unique national identity and flag in order to bolster their cause. Meanwhile, the Jewish people have been looking for peace and have offered many olive branches to their Arab neighbours. None to date have worked. As for the future, as we tragically know, many elected Muslim governments do not recognise Israel and, like the Mufti, are intent on removing Jews from the river to the sea. This is playing out in events now all too tragically. Maybe me and Ahmed can play games with one another with a place that recognises the rights of all religions to live side by side. Many Jews are dreamers and look forward to a day when there will be no more wars. And that needs to be a dream that all peoples should get behind. And I hope people in my community will get behind this shared dream. And there have been signs of progress. Israel has made peace deals with the UAE, Bahrain, Egypt and Jordan. My fellow Jews are looking for a partner on the journey to an everlasting peace. We don't want to be pulled into a conflict that we don't want, and we can't give you a happy ending even though we'd like to, as the current situation is heartbreaking and tragic. Perhaps it won't stop until we talk and listen and moderate peacemakers come to the fore. As for the marbles, we want that the biggest fight in the Middle East is that David and Ahmed can't resolve their marble games. We hope millions of others are searching for a shared future and want their kids and grandkids to play marbles and to learn to love one another.